Hello guys, I am Parinta and welcome to my channel to polish your CHC concepts with me. So, let's get started. Our today's topic that we are going to see is dynamic or adaptive dictionary technique. That is, um, in my previous video if you have seen, we have already discussed about dictionary technique. What is dictionary technique? I have told you that there are mainly two, uh, two flavors of dictionary technique that is static and dynamic. In the previous video, we have already discussed about the static technique that is diagram coder. The static technique we have already discussed. Now from this video onwards, we are going to discuss about the dynamic or the adaptive technique of dictionary coding. So in this also, we are having three main flavors that is LZ77, LZ78 and LZW. Right, these are the three main flavors. So in this first video, we are going to learn about the first technique that is LZ77. We will see that how LZ77 works. LZ77 that is, it is one of the dynamic or adaptive technique of diagram coding. Fine, we will see one whole example here. LZ77 is also known as LZ1 and it is also known as sliding window. Actually, these things are very important to know because in case you are not asked LZ77 directly, you are asked to solve any question with the help of LZ1. In that case, you must be knowing that LZ1 is nothing but LZ77. So these are the three main names by which LZ77 is known. Uh, okay, so let's see how to apply this LZ77 with the help of an example. Here in the given example, what they are asking? They have given one whole sequence C A B R A C A. Okay, let me speak up, speak it up one for once for you in case you want to note it down or something. C A B R A C A D A B R A R R A R R A D. This is the whole sequence that is given. They are expecting us to encode this sequence with the help of LZ77 dictionary technique. Now in this dictionary technique, as you know, it is also known as sliding window and as it is known as sliding window, we will be having one whole window. It is divided into two main parts. The first part, see, for example, this is the whole window. The first part of the window is known as search buffer and the second part is known as look ahead buffer. So our whole window will be there. It is divided into two search buffer and look ahead buffer. So, if the question is given to you for encoding or decoding, they will be giving you the windows, window size and any of one of these two. In our given example, they are giving one sequence. We are supposed to encode this sequence with the help of LZ77. They have given the window size equal to 13 and look ahead buffer equal to 6. These two sizes are given. So as I told, look ahead buffer or look ahead, as I told, this window size is made up of, the whole window is made up of search buffer and look ahead buffer. Now as window size is given and look ahead size is also given, we can obviously find out the size of search buffer. Search buffer size will be equal to what? The size of the window minus look ahead buffer size. So 13 minus 6, we have found out that the size of the search buffer is equal to 7. So now we are having the size of look ahead buffer as well as search buffer. So I can make my whole window. So in the very first step, I am making this whole window. I am making my whole window. Uh, and I am dividing the window as in the two parts. The first part is the search buffer and the second part is the look ahead buffer. The size of the search buffer is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have kept 7 places for it and for look ahead buffer we will be having 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 ok now we will start to decode the whole sequence that is given to me now we are just starting to decode that means nothing is decoded yet so my whole sequence will be now present in the look ahead buffer so I will start writing this sequence from the look ahead buffer that is C A B R A C C A B R A C. This 6 can be occupied here because we know that the look ahead buffer size is only 6. So only first 6 elements can be occupied here. And the remaining we will write here outside the window like this. Here the whole sequence A, D, A, B and whatever is there the whole sequence will be written here outside. In exams you can simply write 4, 5 elements and then you can uh, show it by dots like the whole sequence will be there. Fine. This is my first step. Now the idea is to go on encoding one by one 
to go on encoding one by one element from this look ahead buffer this is the whole idea that we are having so this is my first window arrangement that we have already done now what is my first step as i told now step by step we will simply go on encoding the first element that is present in my look ahead buffer so the first element of my look ahead buffer is c so now c is my first element that i want to encode okay now one of the most important points that in lz77 we are working with triplets this is the triplet that you must be remembering the triplet is olc what this olc means o is the offset l stands for the length of the match and c stands for the code word that has to be encoded next this is the meaning of this triplet olc now let me show you here how it works as i told this is my initial condition of the window now my first thing is that i the my first element that i want to encode is as i told the first element of look ahead buffer that is c here so what will be my first triplet my first triplet i have to write is for c so for c my first triplet will be first is offset offset means we have to check that whether this c this element is available in the search buffer or not in this case my search buffer is empty so obviously this is not present so i will simply write 0 in my offset if my offset is 0 obviously the length is also 0 what is length i will show you length means what if this c this match is found in the search buffer i have to check the length that the that how many elements are matched at a time that is known as length but here offset is zero so obviously length is also zero and the last in the last element of the triplet is c that is the code word to be encoded next so here the next code word we are encoding is c so code word of c c of c this is my first triplet well now again i have to rearrange now the whole idea is at every step we will be writing this triplet and after writing this triplet we will be updating our window fine so after this triplet what we have we are doing what this triplet says that now we are going to encode the element c so what will be my next arrangement of the window it is sliding window so c will be slided here because we have already encoded c so c earlier was here now c will come in my search buffer see here uh, consider that this big line i have written this big line to distinguish search buffer with look ahead buffer so now in my next step this c will come in my search buffer side and the remaining a b r a all these are arranged here in the look ahead side fine this is how we are doing because it is sliding window so my next code word that i want to encode is a so i have to write the triplet for a so writing the triplet for a will give me again a i have to search is a present in my look ahead buffer no so it is offset is 0 length is 0 and the next code word to be encoded is c of a so c of a so now after writing this triplet i will again rearrange my window so rearranging the window means a will now come here in the search buffer this is the division a will come in my search buffer and the next thing to be encoded is b now i have to write the triplet for b now how to write down the triplet for b how to write down the triplet for b we can write down the triplet for b like this um again is b present in my search buffer no b is not present in my search buffer so the offset will be zero the length will also be zero and the next thing to be encoded is b so c of b now how i how i will arrange my window i will arrange my window like this uh, b will now come in my search buffer as we are doing so here this is the division so in my search buffer now b is also here c a b and from r a c they will be present in my look ahead window fine okay now which is the next element to be encoded this is r so i have to write the triplet for r fine now the second thing is to write the triplet for r so how to write the triplet for r c now we are writing the triplet for r writing the triplet for r what we need to do is see we have to write the triplet for r now 
is r present in my search buffer no r is not present in my search buffer so the offset will be zero the length will also be zero and the next code word to be encoded is this r so c of r now i have to update my window this r will now come in my search buffer fine and from a all these things are present here so now i have to now the next thing to be encoded is this a right so now i have to write this a have to be encoded next so now i will write the triplet for a so the triplet for a i have to write now what is the first element the first element is offset i have to check that whether this a is already present in the search buffer or not so yes a is already present in my search buffer right so what will be my offset now how to calculate a offset i will check that what is the distance of this a from this so the distance is 1 2 3 so my offset will be 3 how to check length that what is the maximum length that is found that whose match is found see here after a we are having c and here after a we are having b so obviously b and c are not matched so the only thing that is matching is a so the length of the match will be 1 so this length is 1 and the next thing to be encoded is this c so c of c fine it is simple so how to so yes the next code word to be coded is c the c so in next step the c will come in my search buffer so this is the partition of my search buffer this is the updated window this is the partition of my search buffer and look ahead buffer so yes c will come here and from a d a b all the sequence will come here and these are my uh, remaining sequences so now um in the next step the next thing to be encoded or the next symbol to be encoded is a so now i have to send the triplet for a now the triplet for a is this is a so i have to search that is a already available this side in the search buffer yes but see here this one and two two a's are available so which a i have to consider i have to consider the a that is giving me the maximum length in this case if i am taking this a here the next symbol is c and here the next symbol is d that means i will get length only one now let's check this here the next symbol is b here the next symbol is d so here also i will get the length one now if both the lengths we are getting is equal then which a i will get i will take i will take the a that will give me the minimum look ahead or that is nearest so here the nearest a is this so i will take i will consider this a now considering this a the look ahead will be 1 2 so the look ahead is 2 the length is 1 and the next element to be encoded is this d so c of d i will send c of d here so the triplet is 2 1 c of d and the next thing to be encoded is d so now in my next step d will come in my search buffer so in my next step d will come in my search buffer so here see here d will come in my search buffer the remaining things are here so and now the next thing that i have to encode is this a so i uh, i have to write the code word for this a so writing the code word for a what i am getting writing the code word for a first of all i have to search for um search for the offset now i will search that is a already available in my search buffer yes but see here one a second a and third a three a's are available again what i told we will take the a that will give me maximum length so in this case if i am taking this a the length will be here after a d is there but here after a b is there so it can give me only one length so leave it i am considering if i am considering this a after a here it is c but here after a we are having b so here it it is also giving me one length it is give, it can give me length one it can also give me length one now let's check this here we are having a b a b after b we are having r a r here r a yes c if i am considering this a it can give me length 4 a b r a and here also i am having a b r a so these two were able to give me length 1 but this is giving me the match of length 4 so i will consider this a now considering this a what will be my offset 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 so the offset will become 7 the length will become 4 because a b r a 4 and the next thing to be encoded is this c a b r a the whole match is found so the next symbol to be encoded is this r 
so the next symbol to be encoded is this r c of r this is my triplet this is actually important to understand fine so now this r is the next symbol to be encoded so this r will come in my search window so this r will come in my search window here this r will come here in my search window now um, okay so we have up to this a up to this r everything is moved in the search window and the remaining things are there in my look ahead window now the next thing to be encoded is this r so i will write the triplet for this r so writing the triplet for this r i will search so that how many r's are there in this side this one and this one but see again applying the same logic here also if i take this r then the length i will get is r a r i can consider this continuously so that so see i am getting r a r r a you are understanding see this r and see this r and check the length so what is the length i am getting r a r r a here also r a r r a see this is very important and interesting point that how to check we can check continuously so if i am considering this r and this r together it can give me a match of five elements r a r r a from here also i am getting r a r r a so i am getting the length of match length of match is five here so i will take this r so taking this r the offset i will get is 1 2 3 so the offset is 3 the match length is 5 and see r a r r a up to here everything is coded so the next element the only element left to be coded is d so this is the end of my triplet end of my procedure and here 3 5 and i will send what c of d because d is only remaining that's it this is my uh, end of the procedure my procedure will end here and what will be my answer here whole sequence was given and as a answer of the decoding of lz77 i have to write in exam you have to write all the triplets all the triplets here i have shown you up to 8 up to 8 uh, eight steps so at the end you have to write all the eight triplets here and it will become your answer that's it fine so this is the whole method that you have to apply and this is how we will do lz77 encoding in the next procedure in the next video i will show you how to decode with the help of lz77 i hope you have understood encoding well thank you so much